What was the first kind of sign that you guys saw that the DeSantis camp, let's say, was going to start going after Trump supporters? Was it months ago? Was it always in the weeds? Uh, John, why don't you go first? I think Rep and I were actually uh, pioneers in the sort of anti-DeSantis rhetoric. And we did have to be very calculated with it, you know, had to kind of slowly uh, reveal our true thoughts on it because people were very pro-DeSantis for the last two years, even in the Trump camp. But what it was was kind of looking at the way in maybe the fallout of the whole COVID thing, you had all of these formerly never Trump publications, all these neocon publications, and they started hyping up DeSantis. And, and you would start to read the articles that they were writing about this guy because they would be like, DeSantis takes on big tech epically. And you're like, <laughs> let's flip and go. And then you read the article and he like passes a bill that legally defines what a social media company is. And it's like, well, OK, well, that's not really what I thought it was going to be. And so you see like all of this go on or even uh, you see like clips of him, you know, going back and forth with a reporter. And you see all these like neocon influencers, all of these grifters, and they're like making edits of these clips, making them out to be like this huge, larger than life figure dunking on reporters. And, you know, it's entertaining enough, but you kind of wonder like what the motive is behind that. And it became very clear that as he continued to surround himself with that class of people, the neocons, the never Trumpers, the donors who wanted people like Jeb Bush, Marco Rubio, et cetera, it became very clear what the writing on the wall uh, was, which is that they were going to try to use DeSantis as a way to artificially stop the Trump revolution. Uh, and it was a revolution. I mean, Trump has had virtually the same opinions on things for his entire public life. Uh, he used to pay to have advertisements taken out in the New York Times and New York Post just to have his opinion front and center. So he's been very consistent with what he believes, and people like love him for that. Um, where somebody like DeSantis is kind of more or less followed where he senses the party trends going. I mean, you know, when he was in Congress before Trump even got to D.C., he was not leading some America first nationalist revolution. Then in 2018, when he's running for governor of Florida, he releases a commercial where he's, his whole shtick was, look how much I love Donald Trump. And now he's going to try to take that away from Trump. And look, DeSantis is a young guy. If he wanted to carry the torch, all he would have had to do is wait another four years. He endorses Trump. Trump would have campaigned for him. He would have probably won the presidency. Who knows? But the fact that he is trying to take the torch away from Trump, who made all of these talking points that are now being discussed, talking points in the first place. Nobody was talking about these issues until Donald Trump. So the fact that he would try to take that torch away from Trump makes you wonder exactly what his motives are for doing so. And especially when you see the type of people that he's surrounding himself with, it becomes very clear that they are trying to return to the pre-Trump GOP paradigm of America last, open borders, wars for gay interests, and that's just not what the American people want. So we have to stand against DeSantis. Doesn't mean he's a bad guy, doesn't mean he's necessarily acting maliciously, but he is being used by people who are. And the fact that he can't see that either means A, he's in on it, or B, he has like comically poor political instincts. In either case, he should not occupy the Oval Office.